This is my DOXA Sub 300T, which I purchased um, last month. I got it a week ago, and um, I've had a week to experience it, to wear it, to enjoy it, and I've been enjoying it very much. It's um, my second DOXA. If you've seen my other videos, then you know that I also have a uh, own DOXA Sub 200 which is currently on loan to a friend who's uh, reviewing it for his uh, YouTube channel. So um, I wanted uh, an orange doxa for quite a long time. Orange doxa on a Beads of Ice bracelet, but I never had the, um, the guts to pull the trigger. Something clicked last month and I just did it. Maybe it's because I already had the Doxa Sub 200 and I don't know, it just, just uh, drew me in because I really like the Doxa Sub 200 and I really like the Sub 300T. So this watch has got lots of history, I'm not gonna go into it. Um, you're welcome to read about it on the net, there's tons of resources about Doxa history and about this uh, watch in particular. Um, I'll just say that it was introduced in 1967 and it was the first watch, the first dive watch that uh, featured a helium escape valve. Now you'll notice that this specific piece does not have a helium escape valve, but nevertheless it's um, water resistant up to uh, 1200 meters. Uh, despite the uh, 300 designation so uh, I mean if you're a professional diver then <laughs> you can certainly count on this watch um, the only type of diving I do is desk diving so uh, I guess I sometimes um, snorkel in the summer that's the limit of my um, diving uh, experience but um, as you might have uh, might have already learned, I'm quite the uh, dive watch aficionado. So this is such an iconic, classic uh, model that I just I just knew I had to have one. So what do I like about it? Well, the dial, of course. Uh, I really like the orange. Um, well, I can't really get too deep into talking about orange but it's a special kind of orange if that makes sense it changes uh, uh, with the relation to the lighting conditions and maybe if you can see in the video um, it's a very nice orange <laughs> if you can say that um, I really like the marker the the markers uh, it's very 70s, you know, even 60s if you think about it. Uh, very minimalist dial, only of the designation here and uh, the Doxa logo. Um, I like the hands, the the. Um, uh, I like how the minute hand is longer than the and is fat um, compared to the sour hand, which is short and small and thin. Which is also a Doxa um, trademark, uh, sort of. Um, I like the Swiss made here down at the bottom. Um, yeah, it's, it's very cool, it's very legible. The dial is very legible. Uh, onto the case, I love the case. It's a, it's a Tuno, I hope I am pronouncing it right. Tuno, Tuno. Uh, je n'ai parlé français. <laughs> Two now, like a barrel case. Also, I guess you can say it's a cushion case. And it wears very, very nicely on the wrist. It's uh, it's very comfortable. It just uh, rests on the wrist. You can see um, the. Um, I'm not sure about the 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 height, the width of the watch. I think it's. 13 millimeters, but don't quote me on this. I'm sorry. I didn't research this prior to making this video, but I'm sure you'll excuse me uh, Forgive me uh, the, the case diameter is 42 millimeters and the lug to lug is 44 uh, 50 
So it makes for very good wear even on smaller wrists. Uh, I'll show you a wrist shot uh, before the ending of the video and you'll see how it wears on mine. But it's, I mean, it looks like a massive watch in a sense, but it isn't. Now onto the bracelet. Well, it's the iconic uh, Doxa uh, bits of ice bracelet. You can see that there's a little quick here. It's uh, 20 millimeters, but here it suddenly becomes 22, and then it tapers down to um, 20, I think, or 18. I'm not sure. Can't really tell, but um, I mean, it's a nice. It's nice. I don't mind. It it adds some heft uh, to how the watch looks, and the clasp is just great. It's much better than the clasp on the Sub 200. You can see there's this push, this push um, mechanism, and there's also a um, diver's extension. As you can see, you you have. It's a bit hard to operate. You have to really, really sink your fingers into it. So that's the maximum. Now we can go back. One, two, three, four, five. There are five um, uh, um, adjustments and there isn't any micro adjustment hole so you can do with uh, this mechanism if you really need or if you're diving with a diving suit. The crystal is flat and as I said uh, it makes the watch very legible as opposed to the um, 315th anniversary uh, edition from 2017 I think which had a domed uh, crystal which makes for very nice distortion but I think it affects the legibility so here it's very very legible on a glance now I'll show you a wrist shot how it wears on my 7 inch wrist as always it always wears bigger on a camera on cell phone camera but I think you can see that it was quite well now the only the only negative thing I can say about this watch at this point is that the um, accuracy is very disappointing it's 12 seconds uh, plus 12 seconds per day uh, which is quite disappointing for a watch that uh, in this price grade um, I know I can get it regulated it, it has a standard according to DOXA according to the what you seek forms a standard ETA 2A24-2 uh, uh, movement um, adorned by DOXA, there's a DOXA logo on the rotor or something like that, but uh, there's no, from what I understand, there isn't any sp anything that makes it special, it's just uh, your run of the mill ETA movement uh, from the standard grade. So uh, I knew that when I bought the watch, I, still I expected better accuracy, but maybe it will settle down and will be, become more accurate uh, as I wear it. I'll show you the loom, uh, the loom is actually very good. I mean, it's not. I mean, I've I've had better loom. It's not cycle loom, but when I always think about it uh, compared to the sub 200, which has very pure loom, so I'll show you the loom. So here's the loom. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. So again, the hour is uh, becoming an evening, so uh, it's not the best uh, lighting conditions, but that's what it is. And um, I also forgot to show you the bezel action, so I'll show you that now. 120 clicks. Uh, the bezel has the I think U.S. Navy uh, decompression chart. Uh, I didn't get into it, but it's cool if you need to use it. And um, that's it, I think, for now. If, let me know if you have any questions, any feedback. I appreciate all comments. Um, and thanks for watching. Have a nice day.